Well, hello there. My name is Beth Gaff and I am the systems manager, technology trainer and robotics instructor here at the Peabody Public Library. Welcome back. Welcome back to another session of some of our computer classes that we do here. Uh, this is the virtual. Uh, what is this? We are in virtual helpful computer hints. That's what we're doing today. And uh, we I'm going to try to share screen with you here. Oh, here we go. I have been you. Oh. I have been using. Um, let me go on here real quick. There we go. There. I've been using a website called Computer Hope. Uh, this is free computer basics, classes, different kinds of things that you can do that involve the computer through Computer Hope. Uh, let me see if I can copy this and, and put it in our chat. Here we go. Here we go. OK, so that way, if anybody wants to um, get on there and kind of follow along with me, you can. Uh, if you don't see that in the chat because I posted this later and you're rewatching it, I will put it in the um, description on our channel. So today we are going to talk about some computer basics. We're going to do some miscellaneous uh, computer related uh, basics today and then um, I'm going to tell you about what we're going to do next month. Show you a little brief on that. So first off, we're going to talk about what a computer is. So you probably have seen one of these before and a computer is a programmable programmable device that stores, retrieves and processes data. The term computer was originally given to humans uh, human computers who preferred numerical calculations using mechanical calculators such as the abacus and the slide rule. The term was later given to mechanical devices as they began replacing human computers. Today's computers are electronic devices that accept data, which is input, process that data, produce output, and store storage the results. OK. So let's look at a computer overview. Last month we talked about buying a computer, so uh, now that you were a month out, uh, hopefully you have a computer and you're ready to learn some things about it. Whether you went laptop or you went desktop, it doesn't really matter. All of the stuff is going to be done about the same the same way. So here is just a basic computer. So below is a picture of a computer with each of the main components. You can see the desktop computer. Let me see what happens when I push that. Uh, it takes me into desktops, so I'm going to go back. There we go. Uh, flat panel, flat panel di display, a uh, speakers, keyboard and mouse in the picture below. Uh, they've also labeled the input devices and the output devices. Input uh, meaning what you would plug in, output meaning what's coming out. Uh, so your flat panel, uh, fat flat panel display is considered an output device because it's producing something for you to look at, which is an out. Uh, your keyboard is an input device because in order for me to see it on my output device, I have to input what I'm going to um, say. So I'm going to type it. My mouse is an input device because I am going to plug it into my port. So it's an input device. Of course, this is your system. Your speaker is an output device because it is going to display sound out to you. You can find further information about the other types of computers and get a breakdown. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Yeah. Let me go back up. There we go. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the computer in case you wanted to know where and why and how we got to where we are today. Uh, the first digital computer and what most people think of as a computer was called the ENIAC. 
electronic numerical integrated and computer. It was built during World War II and was designed to help automate the calculations being done by human computers. By doing these calculations on a computer, they could achieve results much faster and with fewer errors. Early computers like the ENIAC used vacuum tubes and were large, sometimes room size, and only found in businesses, universities, or governments. Uh, later computers began utilizing transistors and smaller and cheaper parts that allowed the ordinary person to own a computer. Uh, this here would tell us about the first invention of the computer. No easy way to answer this question. Um, so it was created by Charles Babbage in 1822. Uh, it doesn't resemble what most would consider a computer today. Therefore, this page provides a listing of each of the computers first, starting with the difference engines. Wow, look. Here's all of your uh, when the word computer was first used, first mechanical. So you'll be able to dive a little bit deeper into some of this, or perhaps maybe later on we can talk about the uh, invention of computers. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Uh, because it looks like there's a lot of information that is that we could definitely dig into. So let's talk about the um, how computers are used today. So today computers do jobs that used to be complicated. They make them much simpler. For example, you could write a letter in a word processor. Uh, a word processor would be like Microsoft Word or uh, Open Office document. Uh, Google Docs, um, those are all considered some type of word processing. Uh, you can edit at any time. They have a spell check, print copies, and send it to someone across the world in seconds. All these activities would have taken someone days, if not months, to do. So here are some examples um, of a small fraction of what a computer does. How are computers used? So here again, another like class lesson right here, how we use computers or how we could use a computer uh, for banks and financial business, communication, defense. I mean, there the list just goes on and on. Um, how does it work? So this talks about uh, the boringness of computers and how they work and um so if you're interested in that you could explore i'm not sure i will do it as a class and what are the advantages of using a computer we are going to talk about the advantages so society has come to rely heavily on computers computers affect nearly every aspect of our lives although there are disadvantages to using a computer uh, they believe that the advantages greatly outweigh them. So parents, if you're on the fence about the decision on whether or not to buy your child a computer, perhaps these advantages can help you uh, change your mind or convince you. Increase your productivity. Computers increase your productivity and with a good understanding of software running on them, you become more productive at everything you do. For example, once you have a basic understanding of using a word processor, and again, that is going to be uh, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, uh, Open Office. You can create, store, edit, share, and print documents and letters. Each of these tasks was earlier impossible or slower with all pre-existing technologies. I know for me, when I was growing up, computers didn't start becoming into play until I was in my early 20s. So growing up when going through school, we would have to go to the library and we would have to get all these different books. We'd have to research everything. I mean, most of the time it was just a social venture because, you know, you're there with your friends, you're studying and you're making copies and you're trying to get them on a poster board. Really, they've made it so convenient and easy. Um, it does connect you to the inter internet. So connecting a computer to the internet unlocks its full potential. 
Once connected, your choices and available options, as far as information goes, are also limitless. Many of the benefits listed on this page pertain to a computer connected to the internet. So if you're watching this right now, then you obviously have internet. So this is gonna help you understand the connectivity. What things to do when you're bored on the internet. That is a whole nother class. <laughs> uh, things to do when you're bored on the internet. I'm gonna write that down. They have a lot of good topics on this, so we're going to be reviewing quite a few of them. And what are the advantages? Let's talk about what some of the advantages. Um, actually, that's a whole nother class, so I'm not going to go there. And what the advantages are. Just writing it down. Advantages of the Internet. OK, so you can store vast amounts of information and reduce waste. Computers are, computers are capable of storing and accessing vast amounts of information. For example, a computer and devices like ebook readers can store hundreds or thousands of books given enough storage capacity. So you would need to upgrade your tablet if you don't have enough storage to be able to handle books that have a lot of content. Uh, so you want to check your, your storage when you purchase those items as well, which we talked about in the last class. Um, was that storage capacity uh, by storing books, documents, movies, pictures and songs digitally. You can quickly find what you need by searching and sharing information between devices. It eliminates the need for paper used to make non digital versions of media. Uh, the computer helps sort, organize and search through information. A computer can can use its stored information more efficient efficiently than any other device. In our earlier example, we mentioned the ability to store thousands of books. Once these books are stored on a computer, they can be stored into categories, alphabetized and searched to find what you're looking for in a few seconds. Trying to find the exact text in a thousand books would take a human months, if not years. So more sophisticated artificial intelligence can also be designed to make even more intelligent decisions. For example, there is computer software designated to help screen for cancers. Computers can scan through millions of possible signs of cancer and give a positive or negative result in less than a few minutes. Scientists are also using computers to help invent new methods of curing diseases and protein with protein sequence patterns. So it's helping us with our health. It's helping us get organized, getting sorted, being able to search for things get a better understanding of data. Computers can also give you a better understanding of data and big data. For example, a business could have a database of items they've sold. Using that data, they can quickly identify what sells best at what time of the year, when to mark up or down items, and what items are not selling. Having access to this type of information gives the business a better understanding of their customers and a competitive edge against their competitors. It also keeps you connected. Computers help you uh, connect with long distance friends, family, all over email and social networking or media. You can also connect with millions of others, other people who share your same interests through online forums, chats, uh, VOIP services like Skype. Connecting to people worldwide is also an excellent way to meet people you would usually never meet. Another great thing about commu communication on the Internet is that it's fast compared to other forms of communication. So, for example, you can send someone an email on the other side of the planet and have it arrive in less than a few minutes. Snail mail or your postal mail could take days or even weeks to arrive. So. One reason why our snail mail is hurting is because of the email system. Help you learn and keep you informed. One of the most significant impacts computers have on our community is when computers are connected to the Internet. It is an educational tool that helps answer almost any question teaching you anything that interests you. You can also access worldwide news to keep up to date with all the latest news, weather and stories around the world. You could learn a new profession by reading websites or watching videos. You could even sign up for online courses that teach you about any subject 
you'd learn in school. So um, another class we could do is how to, let's see, what's this say? How to learn more about computers. You can make money online. When connected to the internet, a computer could help you make money in many different ways. For example, creating and running in an online store is cheaper than having a physical store. Also, once online, your store or product has a global audience and you could sell to anyone in the world. So I have done classes in the past of how to make money online. Um, but we may need to revisit that. It's been a while. Um, as far as the economic value of computers, a computer can save a person, company, school, or government a lot of money. For example, the time saved in labor costs alone can save a tremendous amount of money and time. As an earlier example, in 1890, Herman Hallerith developed a method for machines to record and store information on punch cards for the U.S. Census. The machine was approximately 10 times faster than the manual tabulations and save the census office millions of dollars. More recent computers can improve these results even further. In addition to helping you make and save money, a spreadsheet is also an excellent tool for keeping track of your finances and break down your spending habits. It improves your employment options. So knowing how to use your computer and having a computer can improve your employment options and work from home. So for example, in the 2020 COVID-19 outbreak, many offices needed their employees to work from home. Knowing how to use a computer and having a computer at home allowed many office workers to continue their work even during the crisis. Also, by getting skilled on, at computers, you'll be more qualified for other positions, allowing you to change your position or place of employment for higher pay. You can improve your abilities. Are you not the best speller, have poor grammar, not great at math? Maybe you don't have a great memory or need help with something else. Using a computer improves all your abilities. Or if you have a hard time learning, you can rely on the computer as an assistant. Uh, it does help automate and monitor. A computer can be programmed to complete a task and once done, repeat that task as often as needed. For example, a computer could be programmed to move a robotic arm that builds a part for a car or um, filter, sort, respond, and forward incoming emails. Programming a computer controlled robot to do tedious, dangerous, or repetitive tasks allows humans to focus on enjoyable, safe, and non-repetitive tasks. A computer can automate most imaginable tasks and can also be programmed to wait for something to occur. For example, computers connected to a camera can be programmed to watch for movement and when detected, send an alert and become recording. And we see that all the time with motion censored cameras. Computer saves you time. Today, many services help save you time. Several examples are listed below. Using a site like Amazon, you can find many of the same products you would find at a store for the same price or cheaper. You can also have those items shipped to your door without having to leave your home. I do know that in some instances, Shopping on walmart.com is cheaper than going to the store. So look into that before you are um, buying it at the store because you could, if you, and I do know that I think that they have a certain amount you have to spend in order to get free shipping. Uh, so make sure you keep an eye on that too. You could use an online banking site to view your bank balance and pay bills. <coughs> Excuse me. If your favorite restaurant has a website, you can order takeout without having to wait in line. Uh, they also have the mobile um, or the curbside. And that goes for anything really. Uh, library books, uh, shopping. I mean, anything has a curbside anymore. You can view online traffic cameras and maps with traffic information to find the quickest routes. Assist the physically challenged. Computers and computer controlled technology are excellent tools for physically challenged. For example, Stephen Hawking used a computer to speak, which wouldn't be as easy without a computer. Computers are also great tools for the blind. Special software screen reader can read what is on the screen. You also have accessibility and disability functions in your computer 
that allows you to do um, on screen uh, narratives also. So you can look up narrator and it does the same thing. For those who have a hard time leaving the house, shopping or socializing, a computer can help with these tasks as well. Computers and computer controlled devices help increase a better quality of life for many people uh, that live different types. You can find love. Millions of people have found love on their laps through the internet on online dating. Computers and the internet make it easier to connect with other people around the world interested in the same things, especially designed algorithms, um, which is what they choose to allow, allow to come through, um, or what is the balance of, can also help go through millions of different people to help find better matches. Uh, it does keep you entertained with a computer. You could store and listen to millions of songs, watch a DVD, Blu-ray, all those streaming channels we got, YouTube, Amazon, I mean, all that kind of stuff. Okay. How are computers used? I think that's what we just did. Nope, that's a class we're going to have. This was the advantages of using a computer. So what components make up a desktop? Here is the front of a computer case. Uh, you've got the bay, the expansion bay. That would be um, what these are. It get, allows you to put more memory in there. You got a case fan. Uh, the optical drive, so here's your optical drive. The CPU is the entire thing. It's a processor. Uh, they don't really have floppy disks anymore, but if they did, it would be here. This is kind of outdated slightly, but the information is about the same. So these are all typical stuff that most of them. What parts are needed for a computer to work? You have to have a processor, you have to have memory, you have to have a motherboard, and you have to have storage. Computer connections, all computers have different types of connections. Uh, you can dig deeper on how to set up your new computer. And it goes through all of those. Now this is older, so your pictures may be different. Computers can be classified as one of three types of computers. You either have a general purpose computer, a special purpose computer, or a specialized computer. A general purpose computer is what most people think of when they are thinking about a computer and what this page covers um, or what our class is covering. A special special purpose computer is embedded in almost all electronic devices and is the most widely used computer. This computer is designed for a specific tasks and is found in ATMs, cars, microwaves, TVs, the VCR, and other home electronics. So let's take a look at some special computer. What they call it? Special purpose computers. Oh, so your oh, sorry. So your special computer eyes have things embedded in them. Um, the general purpose computers embedded in almost all electronic devices and is mostly wide use computer. This computer is designed for a special task and is found in ETMs, cars, okay. A specialized computer is like a general purpose computer, but it's designed only to perform one or a few different tasks. See our specialized computer. So examples of specialized computers would be your game consoles, smart TVs. When talking about a computer or PC, usually referring to a desktop computer found in the home. However, the lines of what makes these computers are blurring. Below are different examples of what's considered a computer today. So they have a desktop, they have a laptop, hybrid tablet and a phone. The picture shows Above shows several types of computers and computing devices and is an example of their differences. Below is a complete list of general purpose computers of the past and the present. So this is all about built in customizing it. Disk lists, which most of them don't take a disk anymore. Gaming. Hybrid. Which allows you to use it as a computer or a tablet. I am so sorry that I'm yawning. It's I was on vacation last week and 
I was normally taking naps about this time. All right, so this is just a complete list, so you can go through those and see uh, what you can learn and see about those. What makes a computer? Today there are two types of computers, the PC, which is an IBM compatible, and the Apple Mac. Many companies make and build PCs, and if you get all the necessary parts for a computer, you can even build a custom PC. However, with Apple computers, only Apple designs and makes these computers. See our computer companies page for a listing of the companies. What kind of computer should I buy? We already went through all of that. So then they have some related information. And how to use computer, basic computer troubleshooting, how to install computer hardware, what makes a computer fast, why should I learn about it, what do I do now that I've got it. Well, here's some things you can do. You can connect it to the internet. You can use a word processor, a spreadsheet. You can broaden your knowledge, play games, listen to music, create music, look at pictures, scan pictures, watch videos, create videos, watch TV, store personal information in, in context electronically, use your computer to control appliances and lights in your house. Now, in order for that to work, you got to get um, those smart plugs. Oh, sorry. So, and this breaks down some of that. Playing games, listening to music, creating movies. Okay. How to prevent unauthorized computer access. Most users, um, so we could go into that on another class of passwords. in preventing computer access. All right, guys. Okay, looks like I could really go down a rabbit hole on all this. So we are not gonna cover that. We're just covering some of the basics today. So I'm gonna go back up. Okay. What came first? Computer is one of the most important inventions ever, but when looking at the entirely entirety of human history, it's relatively young. Computers can help people do countless things like calculate complex mathematical equations, navigate while driving, create documents, add automate many day-to-day -day tasks humans take computers and mobile devices for granted such at the time but how did people perform day-to-day -day activities and calculate mathematical equations before computers were invented what devices came into play all right so normally the way these classes go we talk for about 30 minutes I am going to see if I've got anybody that's in here on my chat and I do not. I will be sharing this link. There's a lot more you could discuss that come up that comes up with the miscellaneous all about computer topic here. Um, and it started off with what is a computer? And it just went on and on. So by clicking that, it tells me what a computer is and then I'm able to dig into some of these other ones. So. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for being a part of the class today. Uh, if you've got a class idea that you would like, let me stop sharing, that you would like me to cover, please send it to me. You can send it to my email. Or you can call me here at the library. Thanks so much, guys. Hopefully these uh, helpful hints will help you with your new computer. Have a great day.